This video is a short demonstration of my final year project for Watch Your Games, and it's a demo of a GPU accelerated A star pathfinding project that I employed throughout the year. On the right here, you see the compute shader that goes to execute on the GPU for the A star pathfinding, and here's just the general settings. For this demonstration, we're going to use 200 pathfinding agents on a grid of 500 by 500. Grid size 1000 here because the cubes are two units wide. Pick the goal roughly in the middle just to give an even spread. And the path max is the size of the storage buffer that's sent to sent to the GPU and it's filled at the bottom here of the compute shader. It goes from the goal once it's been found and goes all the way back till, till it's finished. Then on the CPU side we get back and that is stored and used to update in the demonstration. Okay. The program uses instant buffering for all the static objects, which is a method of using one draw call to render all these cubes you see here. This allows me in less than one second to render about 30,000 cubes, which certainly helps development time and increases performance. The program contains a video that allows you to move left, right, forward, back, scan around, and also allows you to adjust the angle to give a more 3D view as opposed to this standard 2D. Each of the red, each of the black blocks you see are pathfinding agents that will execute upon user input. Let's find the goal, start from above. So now to give a bit of perspective on it. Upon user input, it says so. This A star took 0 0.0415 seconds to execute all 200 paths, retrieve them back in one single compute dispatch. The update speed is also controllable. I think you can speed it up just to see the see the movement of all the A star. And and to zoom in. So then once it's finished, you can reset it back to where you were. I'll zoom in and have a more closer view in 3D. The GPU then um, uses its parallel nature for the compute shader to execute each of these paths in parallel, saving on execution time compared to the CPU, which would be in a linear fashion. But to access it again, Slow it down, you can see each of the cubes successfully avoiding the cube without any failure, and no cube fails straight to the end. To achieve this, I use the compute shader, which has the general A star queuing, which is modified to deal with nodes, which uses an int array as opposed to what you'd use in CPU, which would be some sort of struct or class. For this, because of the A star using a priority queue, I need to create my own because it's unavailable to GTS, GLSL scripting that I use. So inside this, I created a node object, a node data object, and a path object. This object then closely matches on the CPU side structs I create, which are a very similar size, which also need to be aligned in terms of memory. But um, thankfully, there's no there's no main problem because each each member is of four of size four bytes. The nodes have to match, which is one issue, but I could not come across any way of determining that because the GLSL must know at compile time how much in a, how much in it needs to be in the array. This path is for returning. Both of these can be accessed on the far side, but oh, this is really all we're looking for. These are storage buffers that are mapped on the Vulkan side. And then this is a priority queue of size five. This is the main limiting factor on the speed of execution. The priority queue is of size five here and instance rate that we see in this program is about 10%. And in which case it, it never fails to, act, to actually find the, the target, <clears throat> unless in very special cases where it, it's trapped, which performs very quickly in terms of the numbers it's dealing with for the time it takes. The issue is on incident rates much higher, say about 30-40% of obstacles, which can be a very dense scenario. The 
priority queue of size five doesn't always deal with that and that can almost exponentially increase the execution time just simply because each time it runs through the priority queue it loops it has to go to a set amount because the loop size has to be determined at compile time for glsl scripting which is just a general limitation of the of the current language as it is for the priority queue i created a queue size which just loops through the priority queue of whatever set size it is and if there's anything that's not minus one that means there's something in the queue and it's not empty so it'll continue looping in a star pop um pushes each each element down one to the front of the queue p0 being the front of the queue and then removes the last one push is more complicated there's a quick check to see if we're our, we've reached a point in the queue in which there's no node in which case we fill it and end if we find if not if not we check the total accumulated value against the one in that position of the node and we keep looping until we find where it will fit and then we start from the back, loop back, to move everything back one from that point and then set the new position of the priority queue. This makes sure that the better nodes are always processed beforehand. I, um, in, the, in the case that it's not as fine, we just put the new node at the end. We set up the original node, make sure that the queue is set up with unusable numbers to check, check against. If the arc is minus one, it's, it's when you're setting the storage buffer and say the far the edges some of the neighbors might exist if that's the case don't need to check it it's gone it's not passable continue find the distance which is across the goal by the total accumulator by the weight the weight is just plus two here but uh, another variable can add to be it in to make that more specific uh, with not much effort previous id is set if the shell distance is better than the current thing we reset the information just as normal at uh, star if it's not marked we push it into the into the node list and mark it pop and then once once this is finished we loop through and that is roughly what you're seeing here when we execute in time that runs this runs for all 200 agents in 0 0.03899 seconds